Hello everyone, my name is Asi. And my name is David. David and I are two of four friends who together made Lost My Name, a magical personalized book for children. Um, we've taken the idea of a children's personalized book to a completely new level. And we like to think that we've created the best personalized book in the market. So, um, the books are called uh, The Little Girl Who Lost Her Name and The Little Boy Who Lost His Name and uh, they follow a child on a marvellous, magical adventure. Um, so this is how it works. You go to our website, and you put in the name of a child. So in this case, we'll put in Emily. And then you choose boy or girl. So girl, hit preview. And we work our magic behind the scenes, choosing from our huge database of stories and illustrations. And you can see your book. So. We just open it. Here she is, a little girl's woken up and, oh, her name has disappeared. So off she goes to find it. She meets an eagle who flies into the sky on his back. Then she meets a mermaid. Little girl helps her out. Next she meets um, an Inuit man who can't stand a cold. Next she meets uh, a lion. And finally, a genial and very, very clever yeti. And now all of these characters give the girl the first letter of their name. So E for Eagle, M for Mermaid, I for Inuit, L for Lion, Y for Yeti, and hey presto, her name is found. If you like it, you order it online, we print it, and we deliver it to your door in days. Thank you, David. Um, Lost My Name started as a pet project. Uh, we launched it back in uh, October last year, and since then, in six months, we've sold 30,000 copies of the books, we shipped them to over 60 countries in the world, and we did it with very little uh, marketing spend. We're going to create uh, a new exciting company that combines the, sto the, the power of stories with the possibility of technology to create more magical, amazing experiences for children. We're here today to invite you to join our seed investment round, and we're asking for 100,000 pounds for 4% equity in our business. Thank you for listening. Could we see one of the books? Yes. Thank you. A tall tale or a winning pitch from Assi and David. They're looking for a hefty £100,000 for just 4% of their innovative children's book. The team behind Lost My Name just have to hope they haven't already lost Peter Jones's interest. Guys, um, when you were pitching it, I was sort of almost looking in the air, thinking this won't, this won't last very long. And then when you gave me these five books, and I opened them up and I saw my children's names in it, my sort of, my brain disengaged and my heart <laughs> went to mush. That, that's, that happens to a lot of people who get the books. So that our success has been a lot of word of mouth and the feedback we get from Facebook and Twitter and bloggers is just overwhelming. The kids adore it, the parents adore reading it to the kids and it's, yeah, I mean, word of mouth has been phenomenal for us. It's really most yeah, it's quite it, it's, it's intriguing. Hi there, I'm Kelly. Um, I think it's a really lovely idea. What does it cost? Each one is exactly the same? The Each book? Each book, yeah. For the customer? Yeah, because if you we're have a longer name, it's going to be more pages. Yes. Yeah, we're not going to punish people for getting longer, well, kids for getting longer names or shorter names. So uh, the book costs exactly the same for everyone. Which is? And, which is 18 99 18? 18 99. OK. What's your turnover today? We turned over £460,000 today. £460,000 today? Yeah. Just selling those books? Six yeah. months, yeah. Wow. I just can't believe you make that much money at one book. An impressive business. So much so that Assi and David have already bagged substantial investment. £250,000 from a venture capitalist. But that creates a problem. It leaves little room for the Dragons to negotiate on equity. Peter Jones wants to explore this investment conundrum. 
you did say 4%, didn't you? Yeah. Which was almost terrifying. <laughs> so you've, you've, you've obviously seen Dragon's Den on television, have you? Yeah. And watched it. Do, I like to think that one of the big things about what we do here is that we're investors on one side, but at the same time, we do like to negotiate quite hard. You realise that? Yep. Yeah. We also like to, if we like the idea, we want to put our money up, we quite like to get as much share of that business, and it's not suggesting for one minute we could possibly be greedy. However, we do like to get the best deal possible. So my question to you is, if you have a venture capitalist that has invested a quarter of a million pounds at 10%, I clearly understand why you're pitching for £100,000 at 4%, but would you be able to negotiate a higher percentage share than 4%? And how would the VC feel? I'm, I'm afraid that the, uh, the valuation is fixed. Uh, yeah. We've raised most of the fund. Um, we cannot really negotiate the, the equity. Mm. If you had been able to move on the percentage, I would have invested in this today because it's right up my street and I know I could have brought something to the table with you guys and what you're doing. Um, you know, I'm going to watch out for you and I wish you luck, but unfortunately, I'm out. Thank you very Thank much. You. Guys, I, I'm going to tell you where I am. Um, I think it's lovely. Um, I think the illustrations are lovely. Um, I actually think it's expensive for a softback book. I'd be really pleased with the book. Then I'd feel a bit, oh, maybe it doesn't feel quite as substantial for £20. And at 4%, I'm not therefore terribly engaged or excited by it. I can tell you really quickly. I, I'm, I won't be investing, so I'm out. Guys, it's a really big ask to make a decision on a non-negotiable basis whether, however good the idea is, to invest £100,000 for 4%. Um, it'll be interesting to see in five years' time whether £100,000 for 4% could have got a return. But it's just too rich for me to, to make that jump. I'm going to say that I'm out, but wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. What do you want from a dragon, apart from £100,000 for 4%? What do you think a dragon can add? Um, expertise. Well, I, I think there's going to be two key things. A, uh, opening doors. Again, just, just cut the time that it will take me to go into Surfages and, and John Lewis and all the major retailers. You and can't, obviously can't your venture capitalists do that? Um, to a degree, but I'm sure that you know you guys can probably do the same, only quicker. Um, and equally, the you know the, the the PR element of having one of you guys on. on so what's that worth? <sighs> so what's that worth? Let me just finish this a minute. I, honestly, I, I Pierce. I, let I me just finish this a minute. Yeah, just Duncan, let, let me just, just come back to a minute. So let me just finish a minute. So you, you said opening doors into into the shops. I just don't see how your ventures capitalists can't do that. But in, and if they can't, and you're therefore getting an extra benefit from a dragon, why aren't you offering us a better deal? Um, we're just not, not in a position like to do it right now. See, so yeah, that, that's one of the problems. You've, you've got a venture capitalist investor already, and he's now stopping you doing something that you would have done before you, you took his investment. But that's one of the problems when you get people like that investing in you. Um, and I think it just complicates it so much. I think, you know, I think this is a great book and I wish you the very, very best of luck with it. But um, it's not an investment for me. Not at 4% for £100,000. I'm going to have to say uh, good luck, but I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Piers Linney, Dragon's Den is the only dragon still in the game. Could his strong background in finance and in technology help him find a way through this deadlock? I'm still getting my head around the business. So you've got, you know, you've got him a, a VC, a venture capitalist, interested. So you've got other investors, the private individuals. What kind of terms are they getting? The angels are getting ordinary shares. 
like us. Yeah. So what's the VC getting that isn't ordinary shares? A preferred shares. Because the issue you've got, you've come in with a structure. And no matter how creative I try and be now, I'm going to struggle to work around that structure. Be creative and put an offer in. Do you think it's in any way possible you could go back to the VCs and say to them, a dragon will invest if you also take ordinary shares? Or are they hung up on their preference? Um, I don't have the answer for that. Another question is, would you guys entertain a slightly lower valuation, say a 5% investment, uh, equity rather than 4 would you take that on board and accept that? Um, we will be happy to consider um, another 1% if you are coming on our advisory board and bringing the value, bringing the attention that we need. I'll make you an offer. 5%, all the money, 100 grand, but all your investors on this round take ordinary shares, and the terms I get are no different to the VCs. Obviously, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that question right now. I if think you don't think you can deliver that, there's no point wasting my time. If you think you can, there's a potential, and you're interested, then maybe Absolutely. there's a deal. We, we, we definitely want to explore that option. Listen, I'm interested in are that. you going to take away the offer I made or not? You don't quite Piers, convince. you know they cannot agree to change no, no, the terms kind of, with the... But yeah, you right. know they can't. It. You don't look as convinced. You know <laughs> they right. cannot I'm agree. Trying to I'm the writer change. here, You're so... Out. Listen, yeah, let me finish. I don't, you've got let to do finish. something Deborah, that you're concludes. Out. You're out. Yeah, but this isn't fair. Well, let me, let they me, let cannot conclude, possibly then. agree to well, let change me conclude. the terms. Because are you interested? You don't look as keen. If you're not, there's no point taking it away. It's not that. I'm the writer, so when it comes to talking about this Fine. sort of okay. complexity, I'm so just... So you defer to your... So are we going to take that away? I accept your offer subject to our other shareholders agreeing to the deal. Great. After some shrewd negotiating, with some spiky input from a fellow dragon, Piers Linney makes Den history, exchanging such a large amount of cash for the smallest ever stake in a business. Bit of an odd one, because they can't possibly agree for their VCs. It's a it's, you can't do it. We might do it. But the entrepreneurs are more optimistic. Interesting. It would be amazing to have Pete's on board. I want to believe that we can work it out with the other shareholders and actually seal that deal.